On this week's show, Tasman Pepe is focused and fired up for another season in the W Series. I get to see what all the fuss is about as I finally get behind the wheel of the Suzuki Ignis. And the Soweto Drift Academy are taking spinning to the next level. So the past few weeks we have been playing in the top end of the motoring world with our three-part three-car Aston Martin garage visit. This week, as you can see, we're very clearly back to reality, to motoring that you and I can afford. Welcome to Motor Driven. Now, a few weeks back during the build-up to the Kyle Army 9-hour, I joined the Pepper family for a braai, which is a barbecue for you non-South Africans, and I had a chance to chat to Tasman about the season ahead. It was a season in the baby carts when she first started. <laughs> the first race she ever led was at Swatkops. She had That's about right. a, a three-quarter lap lead. Don't know where this got pulled out of, but she was leading this whole race. She stops in the chicane. <laughs> and now I think the cart's broken. I sprint over there to check what's going. The cart's still running. I say, oh, what's wrong with it? My nose is running, Daddy. Can you wipe it? <laughs> <laughs> Give me so a I, break. Took a, I'm five years old, okay? <laughs> I took an oily rag out of my pocket, <laughs> lifted her visor, wiped her nose, closed it, said, okay, off you go, will you go and finish the race now? <laughs> you all sorted now, eh? Yes. Racing next Everything's year. Everything's confirmed, so I'm really excited about that. And you flipped racing. Eight Formula rounds one. with Formula One, yeah. So our oh, calendar's amazing, about man. to come out. Um, so yeah, it's looking really good for next year. To be in a single seater and with on a Formula One weekend, uh, it literally doesn't get better than that. Yeah, but I think also in terms of just the tracks that you go to now as well, I and mean, it's going to be, <laughs> Jay's going to be spending a shitload of time in the simulators. More, yeah, right? and more suited for single yeah. seaters, isn't it? No, um, like Norris Ring, I mean, how you guys race there? No, it yeah, was terrible. It? I've never been on such a bumpy circuit in my life. Like, literally going down the straight, your head is like bobbing up and down. Was there any point in the year where you didn't think you'd go racing next year? Was that a reality? Um, I was actually really scared. Um, I think because I'm one of the oldest, well, I'm the second oldest in the class. And when they initially told us that the series was cancelled for this year, um, that plays in the back of your mind. Like, if they do do it again next year, who they're going to put in, um, who they're going to exclude, you know? And who, like it would make more sense to exclude the the girls that are the oldest. I see that you almost at the end of your Ex career. Exactly. There, so this. like the chances of us getting it like pushed out before a 16 year old is a lot higher. So yeah, I mean, I was really nervous and we hadn't heard anything. I mean, we did the the virtual series as well and I did pretty well in it, but you still don't know where you stand. And I think they kept things really quiet for a very long time because. They were working on something really, really important and really good. Which and was the announcement of Formula 1. Exactly, and they didn't want to share it until they knew for certain that it was going to happen. But you sitting there thinking, oh, we're working on something, it could be the <laughs> yeah, end of the season. Yeah, like, no exactly. Race, we series. haven't heard anything. I tried like asking questions and everyone's like, oh, um, there's big news coming, but we can't share with you just yet, you know. So... But what are you going to do differently now? Because I know when we spoke, it's like actually so difficult, the WC, so you don't get to spend time in the car like you would have like you said you would have loved to have had more time in the car to get it figured out but is it not the same for all the other girls uh yeah you can say that but i mean jamie chadwick has been racing the entire year in the current car that we're going to be competing in so she's done so many laps How? and she got sponsorship and they paid for it to race so she's been racing the entire year in the f3 mm -hmm. car that we're going to be racing in next year so in comparison to everyone else in the field, she's going to be here where everyone's going to have to get to that to that point again, you know. And it was the same last year where she came from F3 the year before. So she was already here and everyone else caught up to her. So she's always going to be that person that you're going to be chasing in, in the championship but initially. I, but I guess you're not going to get any more laps with Formula 1 now anyway if you're on that program because that's such a well, tight... That's, weekend, that's, get... that's the thing. I mean, last year in DTM, we had a pretty good schedule. We had a lot of time on track um, because it was us, DTM, and maybe one other one class. Classic, you yeah, know, like that, races, exactly. Yeah. So we had a lot of track time. Where now, Formula One, we're going to have very limited time on track. I mean, is it not time for you to move to Europe? Uh, oh, no, it's a, it's a, it's a yeah, question. Marius, I but think, I mean, if you're there, I think it would make it a lot easier. 
but like I said, I, I'm not 18 years old. You know, if I was 18 and um, chasing that Formula One dream again, um, yes, definitely move over there and make it happen, you know. But I'm 31 next year and I got a full time job. Uh, got for a, your dad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you say that. I think it's harder working for my dad and than normal boss. It's okay? going to be. They expect more. Exactly. So um, I have that to do. So I literally fly out and fly back in. And on the Monday when I land back home, I'm straight going, my dad picks me up and I go straight back to work. It's hard, but so, uh, it's it's worth it in the end. It's something that I've always wanted to do and I've been given this amazing opportunity and i got to give it my all, you know, and if something comes from it, a GT3 drive, a Formula 1 drive is never going to come from yeah. it, okay, I'm way too old, but you never know what else could come from it. So i got to be there and i got to do it and i got to make the best of it. So, amazing, I mean, yeah. yeah, it's amazing. Tough being a pepper. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm awesome. no, I wouldn't tough? say... I mean, there's this pressure. You look at your book and what he's achieving, your dad, you know. I think, yeah, I mean, Jordan's made it like a really good name for himself. And um, my dad obviously has his name behind him. And so I think competing, there's always been pressure to, to be really good. But I think we've always been given that opportunity and we've always performed, you know. And we're, I've competed against guys my entire life and gone for championships in South Africa multiple times, you know. So... Um, I've, I've never really been on the back foot. I've always competed at the highest level and now I'm competing at W Series. It's hard, but like I said, it's worth it and I've loved every single minute of it and this year has been really difficult not racing. Yeah. I mean, first year in 25 years, I haven't actually raced anything. So <laughs> virtual racing isn't quite the same. No, you know, it keeps your, keeps your brain sharp and your concentration, but you've got to have a bumming seat yeah no got there's it. nothing else so i mean i've been doing as many laps as i can in the cart um to try and keep physically fit driving wise um, yeah i'd love for more and more people to know tasman pepper because unfortunately that level of motorsport just doesn't get the the exposure. level of exposure that a rugby yeah. player or a cricketer gets and i just think what yeah. you're doing at that level is just amazing and people should be yeah, people should be screaming out about it. Yeah, I mean, like, you you know me, and um, I'm not one to, like, step forward in front of a crowd and say, hi, this yeah. is me, you know, and um, that's just how I've always been, and maybe that's the reason why I haven't got as far as I should have initially, maybe at a younger age, but just to make it into W Series made me really proud, competing against over a hundred odd goals in, yeah. in the world, you know, so it's not just in South Africa, or just in Europe, or it's from everywhere, yeah. so, and they are the best of the best, and so just to get be able to get back onto that international level is really cool. special to me, yeah. and now next year we're going to be racing alongside Formula One, and they're like, just, so it, 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 just like, if that's the end, what a way to like yeah. to end it because you are good enough to be there now you must go and kick off and i mean and that's what i said to my dad um after the end like i got in from last year i finished in the top 10 but before going into the last two rounds i was sitting pretty in like sixth seventh position you know and i made one mistake and that pushed me so far back and i just kind of got into a place i was like i need to get into next year like i yeah. need to have another chance at this you know i'm just starting to to Final. get there you yeah. know i'm starting to find my place and i don't want to leave now and so i kind of went into reserve mode and i think it secured me the spot and i went straight to my dad and i was like okay we like i've secured that position next year it's 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 all in i don't have anything to lose but i have so much to gain from it that's my mentality going into next year and that's what i'm pushing Can for be good <laughs> no it's as super stoked yeah. really happy for you thank you Yeah, I really am so stoked for Tasman, another season in the W Series, and this time at the highest level on Formula One weekends. It really is amazing. Right, let's move on to our feature car this week. Another superstar in the Suzuki lineup that is helping drive their sales success story here in South Africa, the quirky Ignis. After 12 years of testing and reviewing cars, there really isn't too much that I haven't driven. It's time now to take the Suzuki Ignis off that list. Well, it 
certainly spiced up the compact car segment when it launched three years ago. It was a massive hit with consumers and it scored points with the motoring media as well. Here in South Africa, it was a finalist in the 2018 Car of the Year Awards and it also finished as runner-up behind the Polo in the Urban World Car of the Year category. All that's happened now is the update has brought it in line with the rest of the Suzuki family. Well, thankfully, they have not messed too much with this quirky face. It is still that lovable geek thanks to the spectacle style headlights, which in top spec GLX guys are framed and have projector style LEDs and wraparound daytime running lights. The most noticeable change is the grille, which now adopts the four square slots with the S emblem center stage, as we've seen on the rest of their family, highlighted here with chrome accents in the GLX. The chins also had a nip and tuck with a smooth new bumper housing the fog lights as well as this upswept faux scuff plate in silver which have now also carried through to the rear replacing the previous black inserts. They've also included vertical reflectors as the other noticeable change. Color coded mirrors are standard across the range but the GLX adds integrated indicators which you can fold back electronically and they really do dial up the visual appeal by adding roof rails, the flared wheel arches and those blacked out 15 inch alloys which I really love. And because it stands on its tippy toes with 180mm ground clearance and those compact dimensions, crucially it can add that all important SUV acronym to its description. <laughs> Now, of course, we've been told that having this extra ground clearance is really fantastic for our road applications. I don't buy into that at all. If you look at our daily commute, we are normally sitting on highways and traveling at higher speeds. And in that setting, I can tell you now, every single time, I'm rather going to go for the broad shouldered traditional hatchback layout that sits lower to the ground than this tall boy design that seems to be the rave at the moment. It's just a lot more stable. On our little trip down to the low field, we had a bit of wind, and in the Ignis, it was pretty busy. I was constantly having to put in steering inputs. I suppose it's also not helped by the fact that the steering on the Ignis is quite vague. It's like a degree either side of center, and nothing happens. So you're driving like you see in the soap operas, very, very busy on the wheel, just trying to keep the car in a straight line. But obviously, bearing in mind the application, when you are driving in the city and at lower speeds, then those things don't become big issues anymore. They're not as amplified. Honestly, I don't see the benefit of having this extra ground clearance because that 4x4, the Ignis isn't going to be taking you to places that a hatchback can't. So for me, it's more about marketability and how you're able to position the product because if you can put SUV into any sentence, people are going to come running. <laughs> So it may have pear-like proportions, but let me tell you, this engine is an absolute peach. It's unchanged. It's Suzuki's 1.2 litre naturally aspirated uh, little power plant. And I say little power plant because it really packs a punch. When you look at the figures, 61 kilowatts, 113 newton meters, doesn't sound like much, but its curb weight is just 860 kilograms. So power to weight ratio is amazing. But man, what an enjoyable car to drive. The little engine is so responsive, it's happy to rev and we mate it to uh, a five-speed manual and I really do enjoy getting it going. It's happy, it's fun and that's not just in the city, even on the highway. For me, if I want to overtake, uh, getting to highway speeds, super easy and, and often in smaller cars like that, it can be quite a stressful process and it's impressive because we're sitting at altitude um, so you know you're going to be losing a little bit of performance as well. What is quite cool I guess as an option for people that are looking for more convenience if you do go for the GLX spec you can have their newly updated automated manual transmission but it's 17,000 Rand more than manual remains a uh, mount pick. You know something else that's really impressed me is actually how Suzuki have managed to shoehorn so much space uh, into such diminutive proportions. I get in here in my driving position there is plenty of space behind me for passengers. My headroom is amazing. You don't feel like you're cramped at all so they've really done a fantastic job but the Japanese really are masters at that. One thing that I did find quite uncomfortable was actually the seating. 
getting into my driving position originally didn't feel so bad, but the minute we sat on the open road and I was in my seat for three hours, suddenly I was like, yo, ants in the pants trying to find a comfortable position. It's like all of that cushioning and support just didn't exist anymore. But again, let's keep it in context. Let's understand that this is not a Mercedes-Benz S-Class. So look at the price and look at the application. But what I do love is how they've managed to bring in all that character that they've styled on the outside through into the interior. The optional new two-tone color combo may not make practical sense, but the lightness certainly enhances that spacious feeling. I think the look and the layout is really trendy and on point. Nothing feels cheap or cheesy. Even the choice of silver or the blue cabin accents really work. An Ignis strength is its standard specification. You're going to get electric windows all round, central locking, the multifunctional steering wheel, there's Bluetooth connectivity and a USB, but you really do want to upgrade to the GLX because it adds their touchscreen infotainment system with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connectivity. You also then get climate control and I do love the retro fitting of the unit and you get silver or chrome accents throughout the cabin. Keyless entry with push to start as well as the rear park sensors and a reverse camera top off the GLX features. Suzuki South Africa have committed to a minimum safety standard in all their cars, so the Ignis does come with dual airbags, ABS and Isofix anchor points, and when crash tested by Global NCAP, this equated to three stars for adult protection and just one star for child protection, a mandatory score because Suzuki did not recommend a child restraint system test. So it's not brilliant, but it is on par with other vehicles at this price point. At just over 190,000 Rand, the entry level GL is a really enticing proposition, especially as it does include a service plan and Suzuki's industry leading five year, 200,000 kilometer warranty. But you have to find that extra 30,000 Rand needed to get you into the top spec GLX. It's just so worth it, even if it's just for the looks. Their automated manual transmission is also only offered in GLX spec and is priced at 240. 41,000 Rand. Do you remember that little kid in Jerry Maguire? That is what the Ignis reminds me of. It is impossible not to fall in love with it. Besides the spectacled front face, it just really has so much unique character. And I was moaning about the fact that does it really need 180 mil ground clearance? I think I'd love it even if it was sitting low down like a traditional hatchback. But one thing Suzuki have done so well, we've spoken many times about them smashing their own sales records month after month in South Africa. They have figured out what our consumers want and they've brought product to market that really suits those needs. And yes, price point is super critical as well. And that is where Suzuki's saying, show me the money, show me the money. Yep, the Ignis certainly does get under your skin. It's kind of like the fuff of the motoring world. It punches way above its weight. So from a car with character to characters with cars, spinning is such a wonderful snapshot of the South African culture. The spinners themselves are superheroes in their communities and the Gosheshe is the car of choice. But spinning has also evolved as we found out when we smoked up the arena with the Soweto Drift Academy. Kailami Nanawa may very well be an international event, but the Soweto Drift Academy ensured it was packed full of South African flavor. The Shize Tayara Challenge takes spinning to a whole new level, as founder and CEO Pule Erm explains. There we are cooking there. Yeah. That's a kitchen there. You know, Madam <laughs> is not there, but they need to cook for us. You know, also it's a circle. Okay. Without touching any obstacles, 20 points as well. So all the obstacles, they amount to 100 points. Now, what's quite cool, because this is doing spinning a little bit differently, which yes. is what I enjoy. Because normally in the old days, it was all about crowd, participation, and who thought they had the most flair. Exactly. Them, yes. Is there still some freestyling points in this? No, there are no freestyling points, guys. There are no freestyling points. We are completing the obstacles. <laughs> The best. 
No, no, say, don't look so happy about it. Oh, okay. Okay. No. Are you the man? Yeah. Okay. No pressure, eh? Aye, no pressure. Because this isn't easy. No, it's this not. This is a proper, proper challenge, it's not you easy. know? So it's not easy. that's cool. Okay. No pressure, chaps. No, no pressure at all. all right. I'm hoping to put a pressure on the other spinners. So here it goes. Good luck, man. Thank you very much. With a set time within which to complete each of the challenges, the spinners also had something completely new to consider, their tyres. Yes, 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 yes. Now you put everyone under pressure. Eh? Hopefully, I missed uh, one challenge. I you saw did. one red flag when I was going out. But you did well. Look, you still had time left, but you also were close to running on rims there. So you yeah, did the right thing. Yeah, my tire burst. It gave me a disappointment. No, but, but you stopped, so you did the right thing. Yeah. Well done. Good Thank start. you very much. Good start. Thank you. Let me start with Kabani, but I'm new I'm so to the spinners. And you new to this? Not really. I used to be on Team GP, uh, so I'm not uh, new on this. But freestyle spinning, this is a little bit different now, where you've got proper tasks and challenges and real skill set. Uh, besides freestyle, uh, this one is not a, a challenge. Now, as you can see on his face, raising the green flag requires intense concentration. And he certainly showed plenty of flair and style. But if you know this castle, you can't confirm it. Now two minutes is okay, the other minute we show you some flames. You make it very easy for me to interview you with this car. Nice windscreen. <laughs> Thanks man. What's your name? I'm Mangoba from Team Amigos, representing Northwest. Okay, explain to me, is this new for you, this challenge? I yes. know everyone's talking about freestyling, there's a lot of skill involved in this now. Yes, um, this challenge is a very new one, this is my first, um, but a freestyle, I'm a freestyler. Select the higher gear so you can uh, make sure that it has more power to turn and okay. make a 360 turn. So you've got to do 360s in that box. Yes. Now you've incorporated a bit of gym corner and yes. some real challenging skill sets. Huh? It's more challenging, it's more exciting, it's more fun. Jaro is a legend of the sport, a man who has done it all and his experience clearly shows. He didn't even practice it, so that's wow. why he's making it. So that's your first time having a go at that? Yeah, it's my first time having a go at that. I love it, and you're out of breath. It's like you, you said motorsport is hard work. No, eh? it's really hard work, eh? but I enjoy it. These days it's more about precision driving and skill actually, not only just making turns and freestyle and brain ties and showing off to the crowd. But it's really improving and it's coming out just in the way. It's really not difficult to see why he is the king. Now, does this not put you under more pressure? Because now you're going lost. I just got a bit of nerves, but it's part of the game. Nighty had a broken accelerator cable, so missed his shootout slot, but he was still given a chance to show off his skills. And if you don't succeed the first time, you keep trying. What I love is to see a sponsor really getting involved. Nice for you as a brand to go along that journey with spinning in South Africa. No, absolutely. I mean, motorsports become very important in South Africa, and I think also within the community. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff that's happening within the spinning community as well. I mean, they're encouraging females to participate as well in, and teaching different, you know, age groups and keeping them out of mischief, really. And I think over and above, I mean, motorsport's so important for AutoZone. I mean, we, we're all about vehicle care and we're all about performance and speed. And I mean, who doesn't love a little bit of action on the side? Yeah, oh, it's so cool. Poole and his team are doing incredible things to elevate the sport of spinning by incorporating these Jim Carney elements. It's not just about flair anymore. There's some serious skill that's also involved. And you know what I love, crucially, also driving the safety message. 
we do not play on the streets. That is brilliant. Well, that's it. Spun out, smoked out. I hope you enjoyed this week's Motor Driven. We'll see you again next week when you can look forward to this. Next time on Motor Driven, it's all rather surreal as Amanda McLaren takes me on a tour of the McLaren Technology Center. Essentially unchanged since its launch back in 2010, VW's uprated V6 is a fitting swan song for the Amarok. And we caught up with the crew from Crew as 2020 marks the end of an era for Bentley Racing.